Thank you. Well, a lot of the stuff that I was going to say, actually, <coughs> Jeff here has said. So I may not even make my 12 minutes, but I will try. Um, so I'll start with a little story that I have about the time, the first time I went to the SOA watch in uh, Fort Benning, which is where I actually became an infantry soldier and where I went to basic training. Uh, we went to a hotel right outside of the base, and we ran into these two GIs. And I think I was wearing the same shirt that I'm wearing right now, which is a veteran's piece um, shirt, of which, of course, I'm a member in addition to IVAW and uh, the military project. And they looked at me, and they said, oh, so you are the people who are in town who are against us. And this was not even an anti-war event. This is an anti-SOA event. Um, but the way that the military has managed to indoctrinate people to believe that people in the anti-war movement are anti-military is deep. Um, I think that one of the main lessons that the government learned from Vietnam is to isolate the troops to make sure that the information does not get to them at all. Uh, the media has been quite complicit in that. You go to an army base, and I'm pretty sure the other armed services are pretty similar. And you sit at the uh, at the at the dining facility, or if you, if you go to the post exchange store, and you look at the TVs, what's what's showing? Um, O'Reilly, you know the O'Reilly factor, uh, you know Fox News. Uh, the main newspaper outside outside is the USA Today, which doesn't even run on the weekends. Um, and in, in places like Iraq and Afghanistan, the military has managed to cut out access to uh, websites like Facebook and MySpace, and uh, they're, they're, they monitor blogs uh, that the GIs write and things like that. So a lot of the information doesn't get to the people in the military. And the information that does get to people in the military is that we are out there to get them, that we hate them, uh, that we are anti-military. So when this young man looked at me and said, you know, you guys are here because you're against us, because you're opposed to us, I said, no, we're not here about you guys. You know, we're not here about the war. You know, we're here about the, uh, the School of the Americas. And I explained what the SOA was. And I said, and by the way, you know, I'm an Iraq war vet myself. You know, I trained here. I became an infantryman here. I went to the House of Pain, you know, in St. Hill. And I was in, in Alpha Company and third platoon killers, you know. And you know, I bonded with this kid. You know, even though he was like uh, what a, a decade younger than me. And I think that this is one of the main things that we uh, that we have to deal with these days. You know, this is a huge challenge that we have. It's the challenge of uh, information. You know, and how that information gets to people. We have to become infiltrators in the military. We have to break those barriers that the military has erected to keep the information from reaching uh, the troops. And we have to act strategically, and this is something that I, that I must say I'm not only doing for the military project, but something that I also hope would be adopted by Iraq Veterans Against the War and other groups. You know, I think that the, uh, the approach to, uh, to do outreach that the military project has is very effective. I've done it a couple of times. We just did it for a few hours with Al back there. And, uh, today, actually, and we have some pretty funny stories about that that we can share with you later. We also have some material we can We, we do, actually, uh, some pretty interesting stuff. Um, but I think that, for instance, you know, here we have a regional coordinator. We have the Southeast Regional Coordinator. We have a former regional coordinator here, uh, Adrian Keeney, who's also a, a board member and the co-chair of the board. Jeff is also a board member himself. Um, and uh, I think that in Iraq Veterans Against the War, that we should be acting, you know, we should be doing a lot of intelligence work, and we should not be doing things in a way that nine people, you know, on the board, and then a few staff people, you know, in, in Philadelphia, are making decisions about regions and chapters that we have n absolutely no idea about. Whereas you have people sitting right here in this room who have the information that, hey, here is the first brigade combat team that for the first time in history has the sole mission of repressing civil unrest. And at the time that this came out, uh, which I believe the, uh, the battalion, um, the battalion's mission began on October 1st of last year, uh, they were thinking 
that possibly McCain could win the election and that because of the financial crisis and because of so many people massively losing their homes and massive unemployment and you know uh, massive opposition to the occupations of both Iraq and Afghanistan, people were going to be pissed to the level that we were going to need to send the military out there and repress them and we are just basically not going to you know, heed to the will of the people, but we're going to continue protecting our interests and the interests that put us in, in power. And we're going to do that by unleashing crude repression. And here's what we're going to use. Who are we going to use? We're going to use people who have been spent three of the last five years in combat in Iraq. Uh, the, uh, the, the third ID, when I was being court-martialed in Fort, at Fort Stewart, uh, they were getting uh, ready to go back to Iraq on a second deployment. And side story, the people on my, the, the panel of my peers, uh, that was my jury, were the commanders of that unit that was gearing up to go back to, uh, to Iraq. Uh, so this is a pretty, uh, pretty significant uh, group of people that we're looking at, because these are not the people that you want to have out there, you know, passing out bread and water and things like that. You know, these are the people who, by the way, let's talk about their gear and their training. These are the people who are being issued shields. These are the people who are being issued uh, rubber bullets, batons, uh, spike belts to control traffic. So this is not the type of scenario where you're going to be helping your community, where you're going to be passing out MREs or humanitarian you know, food bags or whatever. You know, These are the people who are going to be setting up roadblocks we're going to be going to shooting rubber bullets, we're going to be hitting people upside the head with batons. Uh, and people who come from you know, combat scenarios and who have severe post-traumatic stress disorder. So this is something that we have to, uh, to take into account as an organization, Iraq Veterans Against the War, and I believe the military project, and that has to be emulated by the rest of the movement. Uh, because if we don't do that, by the time that we are out there protesting, and they get this unit out to uh, the, the rally site or to the march or whatever, they are going to assume that we are their enemy, the way that Jeff explained. Whereas if we do the kind of work that the military project has done, and we are able to incorporate that as part of our strategy in IBAW, and other groups also you know, jump in and, and, and become a part of this, then we are going to be ahead of the game because by the time they come out, they are going to be like, hey, there's Jason, the guy who gave me sir, no sir. You know, there is Maggie, you know, who gave me a brownie that day when I was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> there is so-and-so, you know, who uh, gave me a copy of Traveling Soldier, there's a the GI special people. You know, we know these guys, these are not our enemy. You know, this guy served in Iraq, he's a medic. You know, that guy there, you know, he drove a truck through uh, Ramadi, through Fallujah, whatever. Hey, this is the guy who uh, broke out the uh, white phosphorus story. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not the enemy. He served. You know, this guy was a scout. That guy was an infantryman. And that is the kind of uh, frame mind that we want them to be in, to bring into the rally. We want them to know that we are there for them. And that's why I think it's it's so crucial, and that's why I'm so so passionately uh, involved in this uh, in this meeting, and obviously in this conference. I think that. Um, you know, making a, a presence, and I'm not just talking about showing up one day and you know giving out some cookies and movies and things like that and then disappearing, but making this a campaign and using um, Fort Stewart and the uh, Savannah area and the Hinesville area as as a basically like a like a you know like a, a first try, you know, first uh, what do you what do you test call this? A test case, a test case because. Allegedly, the, the mission is going to end in October of this year, and then it's going to pass on to another unit. So uh, this is also an opportunity for us to gather information, to see what kind of indoctrination work they're doing, how they're portraying the anti-war movement, how they're portraying troops who are part of the anti-war movement, if at all, uh, the training, uh, the equipment, uh, the, the idiosyncrasies within the subculture of the military, within the sub the sub subculture of the first but uh, BCT brigade combat team. Uh, so this is all uh, very valuable uh, information that we need to be gathering. And 
by the time that they move to another unit, that they move that mission to another unit and that they train people at Fort Lewis or that they train people at Hood or that they train people at Gordon or wherever it happens to be, uh, we already know exactly what we're dealing with. We already know exactly what kind of training they're going to receive. We, we exactly know, we know exactly what kind of um, things they're going to be telling them about us. And again, we're going to be way ahead of the game. Uh, by the way, the plan that the Pentagon has is not to have one um, brigade do this uh, permanently, but the idea that they have is that they want to have uh, practically a whole corps um, dedicated to this mission. They want to have, uh, by the year 2011, they want to have 20,000 troops uh, in the United States ready to be deployed anywhere in the homeland to, uh, to respond to, uh, to, uh, to homeland security threats. Uh, and civil unrest, uh, unrest, you know, i.e., you know, crush IBW, crush the military project, uh, crush all the groups that are doing anti-war work. Um, so it's not just one one battalion that we're looking at. We're looking at basically a, a system that has shown itself to be incapable of solving the problems that we're faced with. Uh, we uh, right now, you know, I'm I'm not a, a fan of Obama. But we gotta give it to, to the people that they voted for a black man who was associated with terrorists, who whose middle name is Hussein, who how dare he you know wants to redistribute the wealth or so they say. I don't think he's redistributing the wealth. Not with an economic advisor, you know Warren Buffett. You know I don't think Warren is gonna be redistributing his wealth anytime. But uh, they said that about him. You know they said that you know this man is a is a Marxist. You know this man is a socialist. This man is you know his middle name is Hussein. He didn't grow up in the U.S. You know, um, and people stood in line 12 hours to vote for him. People voted against bigotry. People voted against racism. People voted against religious intolerance. And I think that's a great opportunity for us to to organize within that and to organize and you know to take that hope and to to, to take that that thirst for change and work with it, and that's where I think the, uh, the real power is. The real power is not thinking that, hey, you know, this guy was elected and he's going to make all these changes. No, the changes are still gonna come from the bottom. And the significance of this time in history is that, you know, for once we have people who, not for once, but once again, we have people who believe that there can be change, and we have to be at the heart of that um, to, uh, to do you know the things that we do, you know, to uh, to rebuild the movement um, to, and to rebuild that movement from the ground up, to take advantage of that new blood and move forward. And um, the um, I think that one of the main things that we have to take into account is that people are beginning to realize. And I lost my train of thought before, but I'm back on it. Um, <laughs> but people are beginning to realize that. Um, <coughs> The way to fix the situation that we're in would completely contradict the system that got us in the place where we are. If, if we take the money, if we take those hundreds of billions of dollars away from the banks, away from the corporations, and we build schools with that money, and we train people to, to do green jobs and things like that, and if we uh, put more social workers in the streets instead of more cops, um, and we create a system that is driven by human needs and not by greed and, and profit, um, then that would be totally contradictory to their, you know, the, the very essence of the beast you know, that we're fighting. And, uh, and I don't mean that in a biblical sense, I mean that in a political sense. Um, so that's why this is such a critical moment because they realize that they are not going to give away their power, that they're not going to give away their ability to continue to finance the corporations that got us in this mess. They are not going to take those hundreds of billions of dollars away from the war effort. They're not going to take those hundreds of billions of dollars away from the corporations. Uh, they're going to continue doing things business as usual, and they know that people are pissed. They know that people are seeing really through the lines. They know that um, the anti-war movement is not gonna stop. I, I believe we're in a hiatus right now, but I think that we're going to come out of it soon. Uh, because people are fed up with the bullshit. 
and the first brigade combat team is you know the beginning of the response from the establishment is the beginning of a new era where the government and the corporations are basically going to go to war with the people because the people are done eating shit and they're ready to fight. Um, and that's why this is so crucial. This is why we have to be there. This is why we have to you know, create these bonds with the troops and say, hey, we are not against you. We are you. We are here for you. And that's, um, we're going to do that for now.